Hey guys, I know you're about to watch a really awesome video, awesome interview that I have with two other INFPs, but I want to let you know about another awesome video that I have in which I talk with Dustin Miller, Poly Innovator, about what's the connection between polymathy and oh so self-development. So be sure to check that out. I have a link to that video down below and also up above. So here's, oh, here's like our bottom two of the, the usual functions they talk about. So there's expert thinking, which they call here expert logic. So this is according to sociologics. So sociologics tends to believe in like duality, like attraction to opposites, right? So like, you know, people like in different circles, they don't believe in this. They don't believe that opposites attract or they're, they're a good match, right? But here it says, According to them here, INFPs have a great ad admiration for people who are able to get things done neatly and efficiently in the outside world. And because we constantly forget to consider whether our activities are actually achieving their intended goal, I'm going to cry at that moment, <laughs> whether, whether your time spent is bringing worthy proceeds and whether the activities are organized in the most rational way. So they subconsciously expect and appreciate it when others take interest in the effectiveness of their activities and take an objective look at what they're doing. I know Jenny has, the, her boyfriend is the ESCJ. So I was wondering yes. if you'd see this. Oh yeah, definitely. In terms of having like an objective perspective of what activities I'm doing, I'm always asking like, should I spend time doing this activity? Should I spend time doing this activity? Like how should right. we plan our day? It's sort of like that. Right. Sometimes I can get lost for hours in one activity and, forget about other things I need to do as well. Um, right. Like the, the whole efficiency of it, right? Mm -hmm. Because I, I think I do kind of like forget, like I, I do want to do something that is productive, but kind of like get lost along the way. Mm -hmm. Right. And then whether like I look to expert thinking types, I'm not exactly sure, but they say like this subconsciously happens. So that's why I'm not sure because maybe it's not a conscious thing. How about you, Robin? Um, sometimes I might have difficulty identifying extroverted thinking types, but I'm not sure if it's an admiration or maybe just like, how do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> right. To be like, how do you do that? Yeah, it just yeah. seems like, wow, that comes naturally to you. Wow. Right. So, yeah, maybe it is, could be an admiration sense because well, it's definitely not the way I am personally. I feel both ways about this because I think, like, I would prefer to be, like, provided this stuff but not told to do this stuff. So I think that's, like, when I meet accurate thinkers, they do both. So they provide it, but they also tell you to do this. So I'd rather not be told to do this. I'd rather, like, you just do that thing for me. <laughs> yeah, like, if I have tasks to do for work, I prefer, like, to have the most information provided as possible. Like, right. if someone's very vague and just, like, do the thing, and I'm like, no, I need to ask a million questions. Oh, so, yeah, that's it, yeah. Yeah, so I do want information, but I don't want to be, I don't want pushiness, I guess. So I'm not sure which type that I would find ideal for a boss. And that's yeah, definitely. this is a, this is the INFP thing. So like we often INFPs, they, we do look for like additional clarification on information or like procedures because for us, it's, it's not like clear necessarily. Yeah. So we ask extra questions. Yeah. And sometimes like wondering if like me asking so many questions, like annoy other people or, or even like giving too much information as well, annoy other people. And then they're like, well, what do you want me to do with this information? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. There's like this conflict between like, I don't want to bother the person. I don't want to bug them asking for information, but I'd also don't want to make a mistake doing it on my own incorrectly. Yeah. Right. So it's exactly. like going back and forth in your head, if you should ask about it. <laughs> Yeah, and now we have to do another advertisement. New season now streaming on HBO Max. Plan starts at nine ninety nine a month. I'm just reading this advert on the side. Oh yeah, Euphoria. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we really need that in our lives. <laughs> okay, I hope that HBO ad gives me some money. You know, but that ad <laughs> isn't as on INFP as the other ad. Didn't that say something like about investment? Yeah, yeah, that that one. <laughs> you like it got removed. <laughs> it got removed by the INFP forces. 
tax uh, season, folks. <laughs> yeah, I was like, do your, it was like INFPs remember to do your taxes. <laughs> 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 Don't remind me. <laughs> There's a uh, um, introvert sensing. So INFPs tend to build stress related to work-related activities and go overboard in their attempt to be exemplary at work and other areas of life. So they need people in situations to help them relax and take it easy and forget about their idealism for a while to just enjoy the moment. We're uh, prone to laziness and always seeking the most convenient ways to... Let, let's go to that next part later. Uh, what, did, what do you think about the first part here? I think like for me, I could identify like... I have like this need to be like a bit exemplary in what I'm doing. Uh, and then, and I get stressed out. So like, I might have like, I, like I'm, I, as I, as intuitive, I'm like a, a very idea driven person. Right. So I live in that space and it is actually nice to have people relax or it actually helps me to remember to drink water or to have some nice food and to kind of like forget about that stuff. I'm still yeah. kind of absorbing the, the paragraph. Yeah. Same here. And I totally, yeah. Go yeah, ahead. I, totally, I totally relate to like just um, going like overboard and to be exemplary at work, just and thus like yeah. forgetting to drink or eat and being very like attentive to the details, even though like that's like right. obviously SI is not my strongest, but like just being really attentive to the details. And then it comes to a point where it's like at other areas, be like, okay, F this, like I'm just gonna <laughs> submit what I can and be done with this. You right. Know, you go, like, either both ways. Yeah, it goes. Yeah, that's what they say about introducing. Either like goes all in or like disappears. Mm -hmm. Either like in overinflates itself or or does the opposite of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Like, I think uh, maybe like his introvert feeling is kind of it could be kind of guilt driven in a way. So mm -hmm. uh, not doing the best at work and kind of like feeling self conscious about it. Or, mm -hmm. or guilty about could happen a lot. So, mm -hmm. so you want to do the best to um, please other people, and so yeah. so that that's where that shows up. Robin, um, right. I can be perfectionist more in hobbies. I think because mm -hmm. um, those things feel like maybe a little more personal or matter matters more to me. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm not relating to this one very much. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, maybe this one. Yeah. It doesn't have to relate. No. Everyone has to. Everyone here has to conform one hundred percent. But I could see it. The next part here is, um, INFPs can be prone to laziness and always seeking the most convenient way to do things, rather than prioritizing their tasks based on urgency or importance. They complete it based on their liking and their own pace. And then when, when they're preoccupied with hobby, they lose track of time and can be late to appointments with others. So they don't have good time management skills. Yeah, that sounds more like me. It, it's, it's, it sounds like a downer, but it does relate to me. <laughs> I can relate to this part too. Yeah, there's, there's like um, kind of, I don't know, like maybe like, like kind of like the appreciation for the way kind of Europeans do things a bit, like when it comes to mm. work, like that re respect for like break and rest, like mm. more, more so than here. <laughs> and then like, yeah, do, do, doing things based on liking and pace. So it's like kind of like an FI, SI kind of thing. Yeah, I just want to go sit at a cafe. Right. <laughs> yeah, and this looks really nice in a moment and I'd rather be doing this thing. Than something that is actually important and do tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's interesting that that's under introverted sensing because I thought mm -hmm. it was more of an FI thing, like because FI Maybe. is always like that. I like this and I don't like that, so I'll do that. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess introvert sensing. Well, it's, it's it's talking about here about the weakness in introvert sensing. So I imagine like introvert sensing knows how to prioritize tasks. Oh yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I feel like I relate less to the last parts of the paragraph. I think mostly at work, I kind of care about what others think of my work, so I hope to be on time. But that's not my natural preference. My natural preference is just do things at my own pace. So I feel yeah, like right. at myself when I'm at home and being lazy. 
but then at work you're kind of forced to like finish these tasks based on the urgency and the importance and right that that's true because yeah. work is like a different environment yeah yeah it makes you like worried more so yes yeah and also like people set are setting expectations upon you so it's like okay i'm gonna mm-hmm. i'm gonna do all the stuff that people want mm-hmm. want from me mm-hmm. and then, like after work i'm just gonna like float off <laughs> yes it's like fake it till you make it but then you crash <laughs> you get home <laughs> right exactly yeah so this is the other functions that are they're like non-INFP functions. So with extra feelings, they say INFPs could be expressive and lively in groups for brief periods of time, but they gravitate towards deep focused communication between like two groups, two people, or a small close-knit group. And they tend to shun wildness and prefer serious, more sensitive communication. And- yeah, I think that um, I'm a little bit guilty of that, but being in a mm-hmm. like like having much more one-to-one relationships in my life, but then being in a group is so much fun. Like when you don't yes. have that and then you do have it, you're like, Oh, this is great. I'm in a group and they accept me. And it feels great. Cause it's such a human need to be part of a group. But I think my natural inclination would be more towards the one-to-one, but I can enjoy a group if the group is accepting of me. If it's not, yeah, it's if, hell. Yeah. <laughs> if it's like a, a group you feel close with then. And- yeah. It act kind of like lively or energetic, right? But there's that pre- preference for, um, it says here the preference for like serious um, communication one to one. I think it's good to, may- maybe my balance would be to have more one to one, but also to have a group right. in the background that I could meet up with sometimes. <laughs> Was that last part? Sorry. Like just to have, it is good for me to have a group of friends. Right. Um, but I think it just like feels more relaxing one to one. But having mm-hmm. a group feels good too. It's good. Yeah, to have they, a they, they bit both of they balance. both feel good. Yeah. yeah, I feel like I've I've learned to appreciate groups more, like, just for the fun aspect of it. But sometimes yeah. they really go wrong. So like I could I feel like there's more potential for you to be to feel bad in a group than one-on-one like in one-on-one if I feel rejected by one person like it's like eh, whatever but in a right. group it can feel like really embarrassing or other types of right. emotions could come up so I could see it being harder yeah but it's, also certainly rewarding would. when it does work right how about you Jenny um, I definitely relate um to the preference of um, communicating one to one with people, mm. um, especially at parties, I'll just you know find one person to talk to, and then we can talk about the meaning of life. It's like those serious conversations. Mm. But then, like once I get in, like once I get invited to a group, I get really like excited. It's like finally, I'm invited because no one ever invites me because I'm boring. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, so I like like both groups and one-to-one but preference as robin says like one-to-one because i could be really serious as well right yeah Mm -hmm. okay and how about okay so INFPs are usually very straightforward about their feelings in front of others Mm -hmm. so what you see from them is what you get so even at a party where everyone is supposed to be happy they still find it hard to conceal their true feelings when they're in a bad mood so this could create distaste with the rest of the people who feel like the INFP is not cooperating when contributing to the positive and boisterous mood. Uh, this could lead others who don't know the INFP well to have a misconception that they're a grouchy person by nature. That leads me to, I think this is an INFP thing, that leads me to avoid events when I'm not in the mood because I'm like, well, I don't want to go to an event and like, bring everyone down and like be in the wrong vibe for it so i'll just say i'm busy or something (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah yeah so jenny find this relatable too i think like in the sense like i'm so self-aware of my level of my own grouchiness that i try to keep like a positive mood regardless Mm -hmm. of being in the group because i'm just so self-aware that i can like have like a grouchy attitude and just like I'm trying to like match people's energy as well, but it's definitely not me. Like not like ne- it doesn't come natural. Like extra extrovert feelers, right? Um, have it's just I just try my best, but it's not my natural like um 
way of just communicating with others. It's more so I'm very low key. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, it, there could be like um, any grand differences too. So I was like wondering, like when you said that, I was thinking about like maybe like you have like a nine somewhere. Yeah, definitely. I was, yeah. I definitely relate to the nine a lot. Right. Yeah. For me, I, I can relate to this um, because I, I guess I'm like very aware of my own feelings. So like if like I'm not feeling good and uh, like then I'm in a group, then I, I can't like, it's hard to kind of put up a front, I guess. It's not like I have anything against group. It's just like something that could be happening earlier that day. And I just remember like they took a picture of the group and I wasn't even smiling in the picture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so. I don't know if you got like sometimes it's very hard to pick to know if people even pick up on if I'm in a mood or not. Like right. depending, like if I if I'm in a bad mood, whether it's noticed or not. Like even in our last interview, I was actually ha in a bad mood, but I was like, oh, I'm not gonna show it. So I don't right. know if, it came out. if people ever pick it up. Like for me, I I feel like growing up though, like um. People don't ask like how how was I because they they see like uh, on my face like um, I'm not necessarily like in a bad mood but I think it's just an introvert feeling so I look kind of like emo or something <laughs> but people were like are you okay are you okay I'm like I'm fine <laughs> yeah like you try but like your face like like you might try to like look like into it and engage but you like like lose the ability or like drift off and like your face just turns like looking sad uh, or something like for me it's like, <laughs> like when you're not I, i'm not even looking like i'm not even being sad i, I guess like i'm just like in the f5 mood or zone or something like that and yeah and people ask if i'm okay but it's just Aww. uh just like my, my face just kind of looks like just look, looks like that way. um i so, think we often yeah. have expression i'm not sure if it's an infp thing or myself but i'm people always see an expression on my face mm -hmm. at all times. Like I either look sad or happy or something. Like I don't tend to be able to keep a neutral expression very well, which mm. is a little bit annoying because it's like, sometimes you don't always want everyone to know what you're feeling. Well, that's, that's interesting. Um, that's interesting. I, I could be a rather poker, pro poker face at times. Oh. Yeah. I'm really bad at yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely the poker face, or they call it resting bitch face. Too. <laughs> um. Okay, so we have the last part here, which is the intro intuition. So it says, we are adept at following discussions on development of present trends into the future and contributing to them on occasion if we feel so inclined, but does not take serious this seriously as compared to investigating possibilities, which is the extra intuition in areas that we're interested in in the present. We uh, usually dismiss supernatural claims as being silly, wishful thinking, until they happen to be related to a very specific religion they feel inclined to believe um, in, in their leisure. Is that uh, is this something that you see? Um, I think yeah. I take a middle ground there in terms yeah. of supernatural. Like, um, mm -hmm. I'm certainly interested in there being more to what world than what we see and so on but i'm also skeptical because there's like a million things that are scams going on right yeah wishful thinking but that doesn't mean that i don't believe that everything is and i do look for a spiritual path too so right yeah. i think i try to be like somewhat in a um yeah, just in a middle ground about it where it's like i'll try something out for myself or learn about it but remain retain a bit of skepticism as i go along yeah. and you know see if it convinces me and so yeah I, I i feel the same way about myself so I actually like back, why don't we hear from jenny first oh yeah sorry um i was in my head <laughs> i was thinking about this um so I, I definitely relate to Robin being half and half. Like, um, I definitely um, can believe in the supernatural sometimes right. and um, can, like, just 
invest in like spiritual like hobbies as well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, w- I would say it's half and half. I yeah, don't think I, I feel half and half of myself. So let's let's yeah. go in and rewrite this. <laughs> yeah. Actually, yeah, I don't think this it's is like when I half. talk. Yeah, half and half. When I, when I talk about the underlying NFTs, I don't think this is necessarily true. Like like mm-hmm. being like completely dismissive of these things. Um, maybe uh, Jenny, you can answer this one. So does the individual is not naive to future happenings? Will often warn of the negative consequences. So. In this way, they use um, intuitive intuition to help their their dual. So, because the ESTJ, their um, their weak shadow function, the polar function is experts um, is intuitive intuition. So it says that you actually help out your boyfriend in regards to this. I do notice, like with ESTJs, like because they may just like act, um, they kind of don't necessarily like, see the consequences necessarily. I don't know if that if your boyfriend would be like that or not be like that. Yeah. I think for me, I'm always like talking about the future and well, like mm-hmm. also the consequences of our actions. I think he's more aware of the consequences of the actions in the present. Well, I'm more aware of the consequences like long of, the term. Fu- of the future, long-term ramifications. Yes. Yeah. Like if you really see like where the the ripple effect is, we could see like the very, very far off ripple, like from here to like many, many miles yes. away. Yes. And that's yes. why we're like we're very they're very we're like we could be very cautious in that regards. Yeah. I'm wondering like what's the difference between our use of introverted intuition versus like let's say like a dominant person with like a dominant introverted intuition, like INFJs or right. INTJs. Yeah. Yeah, but it, it is. I think it's similar now, guys. We we do see yeah. like uh, these intuition comes into things like really cautiously, and that's mm-hmm. what that's what kind of prevents that lack of like immediate action taking because we're always like wary about like uh, what what could what could happen then. Mm-hmm. Right. So, uh, Robin, is that something? This this part you can relate to. I think I'm a little bit confused about what it means. Yeah, um, it, it's not, it's not an easy paragraph. I, yeah. I've 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 read this like a million times before, so it's like everything's like a like um, that's why it's uh, clear to me because I read it like a million times. I think I could sometimes be wrong about it. Like mm-hmm. sometimes think something negative might happen when someone tells me about a situation, and then it works out so. better. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know that I'm always. Yeah, right but th- that. yeah, that's the thing. Intuition. intuition is not always right. It tends, it, it does tend towards that caution, though, like that kind of like a wary attitude. But like to answer like uh, Jenny's question, I think the next part says this. So uh, it's kind of like impossible for us to demand that others heed our advice. So we might see like a potential fatalistic outcome, but then because we have extra intuition we see like there's a possibility that maybe i'm wrong actually robin robin situation. robin you just we're just talking about this i think yeah i might be no, wrong when that situation arises different. it's like the worst <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're right so like i see like so someone who's like an infj or ein infj or intj they would want to like always always tell people these things like for me it's like i don't want to like push people and maybe things will turn out for the better that's where the extra intuition comes in but then so yeah. like but sometimes i wish i did speak up more peace and i would say like maybe this is not going to go well and then they do that thing that doesn't go well i'm like maybe yes. i should have told them <laughs> i should not speak up and then like apologize and be like sorry it's not really my business <laughs> <laughs> But like I can't hold it in, and it's like, oops, I went too far and like told people unsolicited advice about their life, and it's right. like not really my business. So I'm like, oops, sorry, I said that. Um, don't I don't really know about that. Mine, like, there's like this impulse to to warn someone. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Right. I, I definitely relate to you. Um, in regards to like, oh wow, I wish I wish I had told that person. Um. And I and also Robin like just sometimes being very pessimistic with how things will go, but also being really optimistic <laughs> and not yeah. Right. 
Yeah. Well, it's so great to have you both on. This this has been very fruitful. So I'm really helpful. So um, yeah, very rich conversation on all the cognitive functions. Great to have both of you on. And I'll, I'll have Robin's and Jenny's channels down below in the description box as well. Thank so be so sure much. to check those out.